media, I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. Is Kamala Harris anti-child? CNN grilled J.D. Vance over comments he made about the Veep. Let's watch. I criticized Kamala Harris for being part of a set of ideas that exists in American leadership that is anti-family. I never, Dan, I criticized people for not having kids. I criticized people for being anti-child. And I do think that Kamala Harris think she's has made some bizarre statements. She has said things like, it's reasonable not to have children over climate change. I think that's the exact opposite message we should be sending to our young families. I want to expand the child tax credit. I want to stop those surprise medical bills. I want to make housing more affordable so that if you have a young family, you can actually afford to put them in a home and I think that it is unfortunate that so much of our public leadership has become anti-family. One final point on this, Dana, if you go back to the COVID era, one thing that really frustrated me and, and motivated some of these comments is we were at a point where we were kicking kids out of school. We were masking three-year-olds and putting the masks back on them, even though, even as they were trying to rip them off at school. I think that if we had more people who took the right perspective and had a little bit more understanding of how little kids actually operate, we would not have made so yeah. many of those mistakes well, during was, COVID. That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> that's a whole yeah. other thing. No. You and I both start <laughs> nodding our heads in agreement when the masks on kids part comes up. That's me at my most right wing is like COVID stuff. I'm like, oh, this is, it was all crazy. We can never redo it. And of course, Kamala Harris added to her ticket. Tim Walls, someone who governed, um, as I wrote about at Reason last week, and my colleague at Reason, Eric Baim, did as well, who governed the state of Minnesota in the most COVID authoritarian way you could possibly imagine, including by setting up a snitch hotline mm. for people to report on their neighbors for um, not following the social distancing rules that we now know uh, were made up on the spot, yes, even anti-Fauci. I encourage everybody to go find some of the emails that were sent to that tip line and just oh recall the insanity of how people were behaving during the pandemic. I so mean, bad. you have emails of people saying, well, my server had his mask on while he was dropping our food off at the table, but then I happened to peek back into the kitchen and he had pulled it down below his chin. I'm, it's, it's absurd, it's, absolutely it's absurd. It's 1984. It's my neighbors are insufficiently <laughs> loyal to the party. <laughs> It's so disturbing, yeah. and for anyone to encourage that and uh, and and push that is disqualifying, I think, for higher office. And this was one of J.D. Vance's most compelling interviews since being chosen as Trump's running mate. I think connecting his comments from three years ago about Kamala Harris and the sort of childless cat lady contingent of the left to their insistence that people sh shouldn't have children or making it harder for people to have children. And then the COVID policies that were actively harmful to children is a really nice way to thread that needle. And I saw a lot of uh, commentators and pundits who were very critical of the J.D. Vance choice early mm. on watch this interview and go, okay, maybe he, mm. he was better than I gave him credit for. Yeah, I mean, I certainly agree with what he was saying about COVID. Um, I agree and disagree with parts of the other things he said. I mean, look, he did there's no way around the fact that before he was picked to be, before he ran for politics, he he had a life as a right-wing trollish commentator, and he did call her a childish cat lady, and like it's fair to bring that up and you know say that that was a mean thing to say about her, that you know she is a mother. And he clarified earlier in that interview, it's like, what are you saying? She doesn't count as a parent. And he says, no, she counts as a parent, says that Pete Buttigieg counts as a parent, um, et cetera. So maybe trying to soften his uh, image a little bit. Yeah, I agree that we've made it um, more difficult to, uh, to raise children in this country because a lot of things having to do with child care, like child care itself, education, housing, et cetera, have gotten too uh, expensive. I would argue that these are the very sectors that are most heavily involved with government regulating and financing that have gotten disproportionately less efficient, and maybe there's some connection there. Um, I don't know about the child tax credit. I mean, I want to I want to lower everyone's taxes. I don't want to specifically lower taxes for people who are just like having more kids, but. Um, but it, it is too expensive to have kids, and we, you know we got to look for solutions to that problem, just in terms of housing and other things. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure we probably agree on the general principle, but probably disagree on a lot of the economic solutions. Um, I would agree with expanding the child tax credit. I think it's a good thing to specifically incentivize family creation, but I would also lower everyone else's taxes as well. Yeah, bring them all down. Bring them all down. Flat tax. Uh, yeah. yeah, we'll go yeah. full round Paul on the tax code, but. 
Um, but yeah, I, I, I think it's fair for JD Vance to be asked about the childless cat lady comment, but at this point it's been so beaten to death. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think he was asked three or four times in just that interview with Dana Bash alone. He's been asked it in previous media interviews and it's like, that's all they want to talk about. And it gets to a point where this is seemingly the only vulnerability that they can find on him. They've tried to get him on being like a fake hillbilly or fake Appalachian. Yeah. And they've tried to get him on some of them actually criticizing him for his service record as Tim Walls is accused of uh, stolen valor. Yeah. We actually had a congresswoman go on, I believe it was CNN and falsely claim that JD Vance never served in the military. So I guess this is all they really have is yeah, the was child this cat lady. I thought thing. it was on Nancy Pelosi on TV. Yeah, so I was just, she was like, well, did he serve in the military? And he, the person has to go, well, well, yeah, he did. Oh, my god. Yeah, the, the Tim Walls, I mean, and honestly, this is like the least of my problems with Tim Walls is the is the misrepresenting his uh, military service. But it does seem pretty clear that he, I don't know that this is the greatest exaggeration in the history of time, but he let people think that he had, with the carried guns in war combat, that makes it sound like he knew something about the weapons because he was using them in war, which was not the case. And also that, he, you know, he retired from his unit before it was going to be sent to Iraq. Again, I, 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 his COVID stuff disqualifies him to me. He's a big government progressive. <laughs> All of his policies are, that are very bad. That's what I, I, I'm, I, frankly, I'm genuinely more terrified of him than I am of Kamala Harris, which is a crazy thing to, to say. Well, I, he yeah. seems way more committed to big government progressivism than, I mean, I don't know what Kamala is committed to. I don't think she's committed to anything. I yeah, think she that, just wants to be president. that's why I tend to agree with you that he's actually far worse than she is because. She is craven, political opportunist, yeah. willing to go whichever way the wind blows, apparently, yeah. in order to win. Um, is also not a very effective communicator of those no. policies or how sh and why she's changed her mind all on all of them. Tim Walls seems to be, as you yeah. said, a very committed partisan leftist I think progressive. If she, I think if she thought that like centrist um, Clinton era market liberalism was the way to get elected, she would just do that. Yeah. Whereas he, he wants the big government policies because he's ideologically committed to them. Right. And I think that she got sucked into an identity black hole with Tim Walls because she's obviously been trying to moderate. She's been having campaign aides tell the press that she no longer believes in a fracking ban, yeah. that she no longer believes in decriminalizing illegal immigration or abolishing ICE. And she no longer believes in all of these. Extremely... Which she can get away with because she didn't have to campaign this time. It was just given exactly. to her. She didn't she, have to run any sort of. She's just the nominee yeah. now. And I think. It's amazing she, how that works. And I think she fell for the the line coming from the Democratic base that Tim Walls is the folksy Minnesota dad and he was yeah. a teacher and he's a high school football coach and he's really cool and didn't really fully internalize just how much his policy platform and his history as Minnesota governor actually ties her to who yeah. she was in 2019. Well, and, um, for him being folksy, I mean, he he's gruff. He's swear. He said he's used some harsh rhetoric to describe J.D. Vance and Donald Trump, which is totally fine. I don't care at all. It's politics is a nasty sport, but it's a little weird to make it sound like J.D. Vance's childlessness comment was like the height of political incivility. Well, have you listened to this? <laughs> he was calling thing? Trump a fine. bastard. Right. It's, I know. Which it's I don't so care silly. about at all. That's totally fine. I don't know if we talked about this before, but there was this Politico article where the uh, the online like menswear expert guy oh, wrote about, guy. yeah, he's exhausting. Oof. Oh, right wing, your outfit's ugly. Left wing, your outfit looks yeah. great. But Although I don't know if you look at he, he does he's probably right. But I don't he cherry picks. I think he cherry picks, he cherry picks I, examples. And whenever yeah. I see a thread by him, I'm like, oh my god, I'm violating all. I'm sure I'm violating those rules <laughs> like, right now. You probably are. So am I. But that's uh, okay. Um, I'm. I, the political article was so funny because he's just one. drooling over Tim Walls. That was especially. He bad, is an yes. expert in casual wear, and there's actually a line in it where he talks about this hunting jacket that Tim Walls is wearing and how it's a favorite of Midwestern hunters. Mm. Or actually, it's not even a jacket, it's a shirt, so it's even worse. And it's a $500 Filson shirt. Mm. And I just thought, what idiot actually yeah. believes that mid the average Midwestern rural hunter is going out to buy a $500 button-up shirt? To go shoot pheasant, or I don't, I don't know what they hunt in Minnesota. To be totally fair, but pheasant, pheasant sounds about I think, right. I think yeah. it's pheasant. Yeah. Deer, a lot of deer. Probably, yeah. So many deer. I'm from the Midwest. So many deer to be exterminated. There you go. They're everywhere.
I'm from Maryland. Deer and turkey were our thing, but um, yeah. and ducks. But I, I, I wouldn't be caught dead in a $500 jacket hunting any of those animals. So that's, that's the point. Yeah, I, don't, I don't like to buy nice clothes because I rip them or spill on them or destroy them <laughs> too, uh, too quickly. And I don't know what I'm doing. So despite uh, trying to take advice from that guy, but you're right, he does get on my nerves too. Yeah, I think he's a partisan hack. Yeah. All right. More free media in just a minute.